Seeing beyond barriers requires that you know you even have barriers at all. So in this video, we're going to cover that. What are some of the common barriers? How do you notice them so that you can make a different choice? And what are the ways to strengthen your muscle to perhaps be more spontaneous and responsive in the moment? In a previous video, you saw me talk about the reticular activating system. Big fancy words to say your body really likes habit, preference, and assumption. It likes to operate out of those because it's energy efficient and it allows for more mind space for you to focus on things that are new, that are, you find pleasing. And in there we have a clue. This is about loosening the grip on the things that keep us in those routines because they no longer serve us. They're not creating what you want. That's why we call them barriers. So here's some common ones. Duality, thinking about right, wrong, good, bad, win, lose, instead of win, learn. If we're always learning, we don't have to make those evaluations. Judgment, duality is a form of that judgment, but here's the way it shows up that's really challenging. Before we've ever spoken a word or opened our ears to hear the words from another person, we are already processing our own evaluation, maybe from gossip or hearsay, maybe from a historical experience we had, maybe from our fantasy of what we would like for this person to be, but we're not sure if they are. We hear this whole internal story in silence and it filters the way we experience the other person. Then the last one. This one is really tricky. It's called expert status. Most of us as adults have been pat on the head for our achievements and our accomplishments. And I'm the first to tell you, keep doing that, but not to the exclusion of relationship building because everything happens in life through our relationships. We are social animals by nature. We're part of a big ecosystem. Just look at all the dogs and cats that have been adopted during COVID. So our longing to be connected is so important to us. And yet, if we only do that from what we know and what our experience is, it can start to sound a little bit boring, if not bordering a bit on arrogance. If we don't know that we're having that impact because we're in judgment and are not really paying attention to the other person and we're already predisposed to say this will work or this won't work, you can see how it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's your barrier to what you want. Now, on the emotional side of this, which is equally important and holds the key to seeing beyond, the first piece is control. Again, our neurobiology is wired to watch for threats. And we try to make an assessment about whether a person that we're going to be with is going to be worthy of our attention. And how do we do that? We set up where we're going to meet for lunch. We set up what time of the day we're going to call and ask them to come to lunch with us. We figure out what the menu is. We figure out what we're going to wear. You can think of all kinds of ways in which we want to control the environment and the situation. All that energy that we put into that means it's not available for us to think about what do we want in that relationship? How might we show up and be our best selves with them? So here's the next one, which is comfort. We're uncomfortable with what we don't know, what we haven't experienced before. And yet, if we want to meet someone new, if we want to build a relationship and build our business and build our network, we must get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Otherwise, our territory becomes a very small four-walled room that might not even have a window in it because that's keeping us safe. And this is the last of the barriers, which is enslavement to fear. A wonderful guy by the name of Zig Ziglar, uh, he's a salesperson extraordinaire. He turned that into an acronym, which I just love, false evidence appearing real. And I have three of acronyms about fear for you. One is fear of other people's opinions. We can be chasing, did we show up correctly? Did we say the right things? Did we wear the right clothes? Do we know the right people? Am I driving the right car? Oh my gosh, so much energy put into projecting an image that may not be congruent with who we are, which means people are gonna feel that breakdown. Wow, this image, 
but this is what this was like to be with this person. Fear of missing out is similar to fear of other people's opinions, but now instead of it being about people, it's places and things. So material acquisition. We, we want to be just like everybody else because we think that's the secret to belonging, but it's a bottomless pit. We can never consume our way into feeling belonging because it's a feeling. It's not a thing. It's not a material experience. And of course, the last one is fear of not being important. So, you know, the last threat is Will I be seen as someone who is competent? Will I be given autonomy to use my competence because that's the way to belonging? And this really is the roots of motivation theory for all of us as human beings. So if we're going to get beyond that barrier, all six of these actually, the three mental barriers and the three emotional barriers I just spoke, we must come home to ourselves. The answer here is having some space in our lives. Yes, I know that's the hard thing to do. I'm not talking about days off or a 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat. And while those might be fabulous, I'm actually talking about a daily practice. Five minutes. Will you break your habit of overwork and activity long enough to actually catch up with yourself and to be able to listen more deeply to the natural creative and originating life force that's inside of you. If you don't do this, that autopilot of those mental and emotional barriers is what creeps in. And when you need it most, you won't have any access because you don't have a practice where you've built that ability to daydream and to value that as equally important. One more tip I'll leave you with before we conclude today's uh, session is this. Begin to pay attention to when you're feeling enlivened and when you're feeling like you are climbing Mount Everest and nobody gave you any oxygen. <laughs> you're starting to find yourself out of breath. Notice the perceptual contrast and pay attention to who were you with and what were you engaged with in terms of activity. And then ask yourself, is this really my highest and best use? Awareness is the key. If we don't pay attention to what we're experiencing, we'll miss where bias and assumption and habit and preferences are keeping us from the social connection we're longing for. So that's what we have for you today. Happy experimenting. And to keep going with your learning, there's another video for you to watch. I mentioned the reticular activating system, RAS for short. And go on over there and take a look at that video and see if that doesn't also help you build that muscle.